I don't tip often, but when I do, it's quick. Mmm, nice! Hello, creative! It's your graphics girl of graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S. Girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here with a quick tip to help you design your brand. Even though Illustrator is a vector-based program, you can create beautiful raster-based effects such as drop shadows to really add some depth and elegance to your layouts. I'll give you an example. Right here, because this text is white, I've added a drop shadow that makes the letters more legible. See, when I remove it with Command or Control X to cut it, you see here, it's difficult to discern the white letters from the light areas of the wood behind it. But with the drop shadow Y, you can read the words a little bit better. So in this tutorial, I'll show you how you can add drop shadows in Illustrator. But first, how would you like a free cheat sheet? Woo! I thought so. Head over to graphicsgirl.com to get your free Illustrator cheat sheet that will show you all the shortcuts in the program. Just click the link below. Okay. So I used a drop shadow on some text to add some depth and dimension to it and to make the words more legible on a lighter background. By the way, if you like the photos that I'm using in this layout, you can download these photos from my favorite stock art website, iStock. I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, so with my copy right here, I'm gonna remove the drop shadow that I have on it so you can really see it. I'll go ahead and zoom in with Command or Control Plus and hit H on my keyboard for the hand tool so I can pan over. So even though Illustrator is a vector-based program, it's up here under Effect that you can see that Illustrator has raster effect settings. Here I have this copy or white text locked down so I wouldn't select it. So I'm gonna come under Object, Unlock All. I'll zoom in so you can see that it's now selectable. So with it selected, I could copy this with Command or Control C to copy. Next, I'm going to go ahead and lock it back down so that I can focus in on the copy I'm going to paste directly behind it that's going to be the shadow. So to do that, I'm going to hit Command or Control 2 or Object Lock Selection. Next, I'm going to paste it right in back with Command or Control B or Edit Paste in Back. Right now, it doesn't look like anything's changed, but you can see the selector is back. So with this, if I come down to my fill and stroke color at the bottom of my toolbar, I could come over here to my swatches. You can show this by coming to Window Swatches, and I'm gonna choose a dark brown color. I'm gonna hit X on my keyboard to toggle between the fill and the stroke and I'm gonna put a brown fill. So now I have, instead of a white fill, I have a chocolate brown fill and a chocolate brown stroke. Mmm, chocolate. Okay, I'm gonna hide my swatches there, put that back, and this is fine. If I were to reduce my view here with Command or Control minus, I can see that I actually can see the text a lot easier. Here, I'll cut the text we just added. See? You really can see it a lot easier now, but zoom back in, it's kind of harsh. What I'm looking for is more of a subtle look that will allow the text to look like it was kind of burned into the wood or at least a little bit of a fuzzy shadow uh, where it will differentiate the white text from the background but not look so artificial. By the way, if you ever do want to outline your text like this, it is best to make a copy of it behind the letters because if you didn't make a copy of it, it will actually look like it's eating into the uh, form of the letters there. So here I have a copy that I'd like to, to blur. So I can come up here under Effect and it's located in the Photoshop Effects section under Blur. It's called Gaussian Blur. 
Now, you'll get the Gaussian Blur dialog box that will allow you to increase the radius or the extent to which that blur affects, how many pixels it affects. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with four, but you could choose to toggle preview on and off until you get the right setting. Now, I'm at 800% magnification, so if it doesn't look beautiful for you, remember, what you see is what you're gonna get at 100%. So, that looks pretty subtle, but let me come on back and play with it a little bit more. Some other fine tuning that you might wanna do to your blurred out shadows is to come here to transparency. You can show your transparency by coming to Window, Transparency. When I show my transparency menu, I have the ability to reduce my opacity. Here, I could make it something like 50%. When I hit enter, it becomes a lot more subtle, but there's more. There's modalities to it as well. Instead of just being normal, I could choose multiply. Multiply allows the background that it's in front of to kind of seep through. Multiply in general appears darker because the background is coming through. But now there's even an easier way, and I'll go ahead and show you that now, and introduce to you the Appearance panel. The Appearance panel can be shown by coming to Window, Appearance. So the Appearance panel, once you have something selected, shows you all of the attributes such as Gaussian blur, opacity, and everything that has been added to an object. And it allows you here to turn elements on and off. Here I am under my Gaussian blur, and when I don't show the visibility, wow, it looks a lot harsher, right? So right here, the effects button at the bottom of the appearance panel allows you to see all of the illustrator, and Photoshop effects, the same effects that you saw up here in the effect panel. And in this fashion, you wouldn't need a separate copy. So I could go ahead and delete that and come back up here under Object and choose Command or Control Shift 2 or Unlock All. So now I'll show you that you could just have your original text that you can add an effect to. The effect that you want to use is here under Effect, Stylize, Drop Shadow. And then a Drop Shadow dialog box appears that will allow you to, in the same fashion, have it normal or multiply. I'll go ahead and do my multiply. I could go ahead and click the color panel right here. And if I want to bring back my swatches, they were right here. I could roll through and choose that brown again. And instead of having to go into the transparency panel, I could change the opacity right here. See how much simpler it is? So here you could also play around with the blur amount. Here I made it zero, no blur at all. So something that might be helpful is to turn the blur completely off and do your positioning first. So if I want it closer, say zero, one, 0.01. Now it's extremely tight. See how close it is to it now. Now you can think about how much blur you might want. Okay, so you can see that adding a drop shadow effect to just one copy of your text is a lot faster. To create a drop shadow in Illustrator, you're going to come to the effect menu. Whether you choose to make a separate object that you blur out or save yourself some time and just stylize with a drop shadow, whichever way you decide to make your drop shadows in Illustrator, remember, you can come to the appearance panel to see what was applied and double click that effect to modify it. If you found this video helpful, give it a like. Share it with your friends and please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, for free marketing, branding, and design resources, head over to graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with PH and S, girl, with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand.